Hey guys, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for ChessOpeningsExplained.com and today I want to share with you a very interesting way to play against the Nimzovich defense and what I mean by that is when you play e4 and your opponent plays knight to c6 this is not to be confused with the Nimzo Indian which is a d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4 opening, which we play as black. So this is a pretty rare guest at tournament games these days, but nevertheless, we've seen some really strong players use it as a surprise weapon from time to time, including the world champion Magnus Carlsen. So we have to be ready for this move. Now, the main line goes d4. This is the kind of the obvious move. And after d5, there's lots and lots of theory. I should also mention that e5 is a pretty theoretical move here. Again, lots and lots of theory. And honestly, why try to fight with a player who knows all of this theory when we can sidestep pretty much majority of this with the move knight f3 on move two. So let's go back. I recommend this move. Why I like the move knight f3 here is you kind of invite black into the e4, e5 opening. Now we just transposed and guess what? If he plays knight c6 on move one, he definitely doesn't want to play e5 on move two. Here, obviously after d4, pawn takes bishop c4. This is the scotch gambit. This is our favorite move order in the white book and we already know what to do. So you don't have to learn anything new here. However, a lot of players who play the move knight c6 will not play the move e5. Most of them will play the move d5. And this is kind of the theme of today's lecture. This is gonna be very similar to kind of center counter or the Scandinavian, except the knight is on c6 after we take and queen takes. But before we delve into the theory here, which I really like white with the knight on c6, um, let's talk a little bit about this rare move, knight f6. This move has been recommended by, I think, at least one opening book, but honestly, it's not that serious. So this is kind of like the Alokhine defense with the knight on c6. We really like this as white. So the way to punish this move knight f6 is to play e5. And now black has two kind of uh, jumps with the knight. You don't really want to play knight h5 or knight g8. Knight e4 is pretty bad because of d3. So really the only options are knight d5 and knight g4. So these are the only two options. So let's look at knight g4 first. I think this is the inferior of the two moves uh, because after logical move d4, d6 h3 the knight is pretty pathetic on h6 this knight is totally cut out from the game and after knight c3 white is better pretty much in all lines bishop b5 is really annoying so black typically plays a6 and here white probably can play any move and just stand better e takes d is for instance pretty simple move but i really like sort of to drive that point home and prove that Black is really behind the development. Take the knight with a tempo. Yes, we give up our beautiful bishop for the terrible knight, but for a reason. We ruined black's pawn structure, and now queen e2, exclaim, after bishop g7, we castle alone, and if you love to attack, nothing better than to have the king completely, king side completely damaged here. White is much, much better, followed by queen side pawn push. Uh, rather kingside pawn push. So g4 is possible, followed by rook g1, etc, etc, g5, and just checkmate the king. So this is one way to play this. Uh, the central plan is pretty good, getting the queen out of the way, bishop d3, queen e4, and mate him. I like that plan even more. But basically, this is just a terrible position for black. So the more common move, if we go back, is the move knight d5. So try to play it like the alakine. And after d4, d6, I like the move bishop b5. Immediately seizing the fact that this knight is misplaced and the pin is quite annoying. So what would happen? a6, 
All right, I don't mind trading the bishop as long as we double, double the pawns for the knight. And now white has two possible ways to advantage. You can simply play h3. If you don't really care about bishop g4, you can also play castles. I like castles myself because after bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, you have a really beautiful pawn sack. e6. To those of you who watched my game against Magnus Carlsen, totally different opening, but same exact idea. You really ruined black's pawn structure with this timely pawn sack. Pawn takes, now the bishop is pretty badly placed here. The king is exposed, this is a weak pawn. And now just develop naturally, c4, rook e1, queen d7, knight c3, g6, and g4 would trap the bishop. So notice, notice that he can't even play g6. Well, what do you do? If you can't get the bishop out, how are you gonna castle? If you castle that way, with a pawn structure like that, you're probably gonna get checkmated sooner or later. So absolutely terrible position. So I don't wanna spend too much time on the move knight f6, let's go to the main line, move to d5, going for Scandinavian-like play. So now the following sequence is more or less forced. Takes, takes, knight c3, queen a5, d4, bishop g4, and followed by castle. This is how black typically plays the position, putting pressure on the d4 pawn. A lot of claw players, as white, try to play too passively. I've seen people play moves like bishop e2, bishop e3, but this is not the way to play. You have to play active chess. Bishop b5, x clan, immediately seizing the opportunity to pin the knight, and after castles, immediately going for the pawn structure damage. Takes, takes, and now probably the only move you have to remember in all of the sequence is not the normal move h3, nor castle, but this quiet move, queen e2, x clan. And you may wonder, why on earth would I play queen e2, walk into a pin, I'm still pinned up, right? And not put my king in safety. And there's a little trick that I have to share with you. The trick involves, if you play h3 prematurely, queen h5 really simplifies the game for black. Because now, notice the rook is unprotected because of this pin, Bishop takes f3 is coming, ruining white's pawn structure, and black is close to equal. So that's the trick. So now, why does the trick not work after the move queen a2? Let's take a look. So queen h5, now we give the check. That's the whole point. Queen a6 check x clan, and if king d7, knight e5 check, so if king d8, knight e5, and that's the whole point. With the queen on a6, the knight on e5, this battery is kind of useless and this is a pretty serious threat. I don't think black Hennett has anything better than to simply give up material with rook d6, takes, takes, queen takes e6, white is simply winning. So this is how you can play this position. And if we go back, obviously black doesn't have to play queen after queen e2, queen h5, black can play knight f6, rook takes d4. Well, if knight f6, h3, this is also pretty annoying. Bishop takes f3 is never good because queen takes f3 gives white huge attack. Bishop h5 is met by g4, knight e5, and now you gotta protect the c pawn. So if you play something like king b7, then another idea you guys have to remember, b4 x clan. Notice queen cannot take because of rook b1 with a skewer. So this is bad news. So this is big advantage. And also if you play queen b6, then h4, and once again, we see the bishop is misplaced. h5 is coming to save the bishop, you have to do that. And after knight takes, black's position is completely ruined. So that's what happened if bishop h5. If, if queen h5, you guys already know the main idea, check a knight e5 with great attack. And so that kind of leaves us that this position is already uncomfortable. Um, so what else can black play? Well, black can say, Prove to me that you are better. I'm simply gonna take the free pawn. And this is the kind of pawn we wanna sacrifice because we play bishop e3 with the tempo. And now if rook d6, castles, knight f6, h3, bishop of h5, rook f to b1, this, these guys are simply bystanders. They paid the ticket to be in the game, but they're not participating. b4 is coming up and the king is extremely vulnerable. The attack is pretty much unstoppable here. If queen a f5, then queen a6 check, and the knight is free to move. 
All right, so what about rook d8, more normal move? Well, same idea, except here we can play immediately the move b4. Why here b4? Well, because after queen takes, check, the king cannot go to the b file, king d7, now a star move of the game. Let's see, guys, if you can guess it. Why to play and play a brilliant move. So obviously knight e5 check is looking good, but even stronger, castles. That's how we win the game. Now we take, check, and knight e5, and black can safely resign at this moment because after queen takes c3, the mate is pretty much unstoppable. Rook takes d7, queen c8 mate. So you see, guys, this is how you punish this opening. e4, knight c6, you want to play knight f3, lure black into playing d5. I would say 90% of the black players will play d5 or knight f6. Because if they were to play e5, they'll play it on move one, and then you know what to do with excellent attack for white. Thank you very much. This was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for chessopeningsexplained.com.